today I'm showing you how I implemented the custom Windows Phone 7 cropping mechanism because the basic mechanism that is bundled by uh, Microsoft and the context of the Windows Phone 7 OS is not really working as it's supposed to. To test it out, I'm going to show you that the basic mechanism is not working. So I have a photo chooser task set up here, the photo chooser task instance. I explicitly set the pixel height and the pixel width Basically, that is the requirement to set the cropping um, size. Now it is tied to an event handler, and I call the show method here. And inside the event handler, I handle the image. Uh, I create a bitmap image instance that is set the source to the chosen photo, which is returned as a stream. And then I set the source to a image control that is set on the page. Now I'm going to run the application and show that it doesn't really work. So I have a sample image control here. There's a preset image that doesn't have anything to do with the image that's going to be selected. And I'm going to click on the left button here that will trigger the photo chooser task. So it is open. Now once it's opened, I can select an image. And supposedly I can crop it. And I can move that cropping region here as I want. And once I selected it, I can select accept. Suppose it crops it, passes back, and hey, there's no image return. There's no cropped image return. And I'm not sure right now if it's a bug or not, or maybe it's a problem with the emulator. Uh, I'm not sure if it works on the phone because I don't have my phone registered as a developer device yet. But uh, instead of waiting to s for this problem to be solved, I decided to implement a custom cropping mechanism. So I was working on another application here. It's basically a sample application. And first of all, what is shown is the same photo chooser task. Now, I select an image here, the same image. And you can see that the image is kind of a, in a white rectangle that is not supposed to be there. The image colors are not really bright. Now, this image is right now placed inside a grid that has a cropping rectangle on top of it. So I can adjust the rectangle size right now. As you can see, I, by dragging the mouse, because it's an emulator, obviously on the phone it's going to be touch. And as you see right now, it's in resize mode, so I can resize the rectangle. Now I can switch to move mode, and I can actually move the rectangle. As you see, I cannot move the rectangle out of bounds. So it's just going to be inside the image. Now I can switch back to resize mode. And I can't even resize it out of bounds. So I'm just going to a little bit adjust it here. Going to move it. And I can click accept and it crops the image and it passes it back to a new page that is a sample page. Don't look at the horrible gradient background. It's not supposed to be there. I just showed it to demonstrate that there is nothing around the image here. It's just the image itself, the cropped region. Now, on the back end, if you want to look how it is done, first of all, there's the same, let me open the main page, there's the same photo chooser task that is initialized in the constructor, in the page constructor. Now, as you see, I'm not presetting any additional like pixel height and pixel weight. It's just going to be the basic photo chooser task. And I'm selecting the image and I'm doing exactly the same thing as I did in my previous demonstration with a system photo chooser, with a system cropping mechanism. Now, one different thing here is when a task completes, I trigger the set picture method. What it is, is it basically sets the rectangle, the cropping rectangle that you saw, the white one, and it ties it to an event handler the manipulation delta. It happens when the user decides to resize it. So he touches it and he drags it. Now, when the rectangle is added, I'm adding it to the layout route, which is the main grid that holds the controls here. And I also set the height and width of the layout route to the height and width of the image. So the image is basically inside the grid that is set to the size of an image. Now, when this is done, or uh, when the manipulation delta happens, I'm getting the point. So 
where exactly the rectangle is located inside the grid. And this is one of the reasons why I resize the grid so that I can get the point where re the rectangle is in accordance to the image placement. This is exactly why the grid is resized to the size of the image. Otherwise, I cannot get the coordinates. Now, the intermediate value is used when I need to adjust the size and the position of the rectangle. It's basically the difference between the grid height or the image height in this case and the width and the width and height of the rectangle, of the cropping rectangle. And there are calculations done depending on the mode. If it's moving, then all I have to do is use a translate transform. It's going to translate it accordingly. And if it is not moving, therefore it's resizing, I can adjust the width and height based on the translation values. Now, when I accept this collect, when I actually selected the cropped image, I say, hey, okay, this is done, crop it. I have the clip, met clip image method. So I clip the image and I do have the same rectangle, the cropping rectangle, and I pass its size and the points right here, p dot x and p dot y, to the new general transform that is going to uh, clip the region from an image and now I have to mention the clip is not crop so basically Clipping an image isn't the same as cropping clipping means that on the image control on the existing image They will be applied a mask that will hide the region other than the region that is selected So only the selected region is visible Now after this I set the vis visibility to false Or basically set the visibility to collapse for the rectangle for a cropping rectangle and I translate the image, the selected region, to the topmost left corner of the grid. And that's basically a requirement because the image itself uh, can be located somewhere like in the middle of the control. And since it's clip and not crop, it's surrounded by a black region that's not supposed to be there. Now when this is done, I write the bitmap. And by write the bitmap, I have it written to the isolated storage. It's going to be a screenshot of the grid that is recruited through writable bitmap. Basically, it gets XAML and it transforms it into a graphical representation. It's saved as a JPEG and with 100% quality. And it's set as my image JPEG, but you can change that accordingly. And after that, I'm retrieving the image back. And I'm writing a dummy image that has a control here set up. It's not being shown on the page, but it's just a control that gets the image and it writes it again, but it is resized to the size of the actual region that contains the image because the previous one has the black regions around it. And there's no way in Silverlight you can retrieve the cropped image directly from the image control. Therefore, there's a workaround, like in my case, I have to go twice to write an image and uh, retrieve the selected region. After this, I'm just navigating to my page, to my custom page that I just showed you uh, right here. And it passes the image to the image control here. And it's automatically resized to the correct size. So this is one method, one way to do custom cropping on Windows Phone 7. Uh, when the basic method is going to be fixed, the system method is probably going to be um, uh, I have to figure it out whether it's a bug or not. But so far, my mechanism works pretty well for my needs. And I published the project. Its URL is in the side notes. So if you want to, you can check it out. And you can check it out. Um, you can check out the source code as well since it's all there.